Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Douglas Planning Board meeting for December 10th, 2019. Uh, the meeting is being recorded and is available for viewing on the Douglas Public Access Channel and on our website. And we'll come to order at 7.01. First item on the agenda is Lakeside Residential Discussion, Zoning versus Overlay Districts, Solar Bylaw, and Dover Amendments. And Attorney Adam Coster is here to assist us with that's right. As you may recall, we um, have been working on a new bylaw. We got a grant that we've been using with CMRPC to help us draft a um, zoning bylaw that would um, allow dwellings that are on pre existing non conforming lots in certain areas of town, primarily um, Wallam Lake Terrace and other waterfront properties that might have smaller lots. The intention is to provide relief to people so they don't have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals every time they want to do something on their property, whether it's put a shed up or you know an addition on their house or a deck, um, because these are non-conforming lots. So the idea was to provide some relief to them, and we're trying to figure out the best way to get from point A to point B with this bylaw. So um, one of the discussion topics has been <coughs> should, the, should the zoning bylaw be either a wholesale zoning district, a new zoning district in these areas, or should it be an overlay district? So we've struggled with that over the past couple of meetings and um, Adam gives some uh, presentations for <coughs> Citizens planning, Planners Training Collaborative for this specific issue. So we thought it'd be a good idea to have Adam in and mm -hmm. let the board understand the di differences between the two. Excellent idea. Yep. Adam, would you like to come sit on the table with us? One, two. Sure. Materials that I maybe share. So I know I've um, met most of you tonight and some of you I've met before. It's been a few years. Yes. I think since I've been out here, probably. A couple years anyway. Few. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, few is generous. So <laughs> so we had a, a few projects back in the day and I was out here I feel like every every month, but uh, <laughs> but it's been quiet. So um, as Bill had said, he asked me to be here tonight to talk a little bit about overlay zoning. Um, I've been involved with uh, the Citizen Planner Training Collaborative for about five or six years now. Some of you might have taken their, their courses or attended their presentations. Mm -hmm. They offer a fall workshop series and then they have their annual conference at uh, Holy Cross every year in, in March. Um, and uh, I've been presenting for them. They contacted me back in the spring and they said, you know, we, we provide the same 10 or 12 or 14 workshops annually across the state. We'd like to add some new topics. Do you have any recommendations? So I gave them a series of recommendations, and they said, great. You want to draft them? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so one of the topics was zoning with overlay districts. And so they asked me to prepare a PowerPoint presentation and so forth, all of which I was hopeful I could share with you. And then I contacted them. And they said, nope, that's our work product, so you can't share it with anybody. Uh, <laughs> oh um, but I can obviously talk about it because it's, it's general knowledge. It's um, information that you can find in other secondary sources. But you know, Bill gave me a little bit of context because purpose of me being here isn't to talk for two hours about overlay districts it's about talking uh, specifically to, to what you're trying to do here so the concept behind overlay zoning is to find a less traditional route maybe a simpler route um, possibly an easier route in terms of um, public participation in terms of um, support at or in advance of town meeting to utilizing more traditional zoning. So with more traditional zoning, if you decide that an area of your community is not properly zoned, to, to describe what Bill just explained, an area where maybe all of the properties or most of the properties qualify as pre-existing non-conforming lots or structures. In other words, nothing really complies with current zoning. Mm -hmm. And this happens in many communities. There are consequences that applicants, owners that want to do m most anything with their lots have to come before planning or zoning board of appeals for minor additions or even slight exterior modifications, they need zoning relief for those things. And I, I experience it with great frequency. My office is in Newburyport. Uh, I would say three quarters of Newburyport is zoned in such a way that none of the houses on any given street comply with zoning. Mm -hmm. And their zoning board of appeals agendas are three pages long and their meetings go on for two and a half or three hours. And they meet every other week. Mm -hmm. And that's just mm -hmm. the reality of living in those communities. The, the alternative would be they could rezone these areas of their community in such a way that the properties were not are not pre-existing non-conforming properties, lots, structures, 
and they wouldn't require this extraordinary relief. You can do that through traditional rezoning. You can take all or portions of a residence A or a residence B or a commercial A or a commercial C district and simply rezone it. Mm -hmm. The challenge there is you've got to get community support for that. Mm -hmm. You've got to get build support in advance of town meeting. And then you've got to explain to town meeting, we're really doing this for your benefit, voters. Uh, it's not going to adversely affect you, even though we're changing everything that you currently know about the zoning that applies to your property. Mm -hmm. That works in some communities, and in some ways, that's in some instances, that's the best way to go. The concept of an overlay district is you can say to the public, you can say to the owners of these properties, we're not doing anything to change your underlying zoning. If you're in the Residence A district today, you're going to continue to be in the Residence A district once the new overlay district is adopted. So nothing that you can do today, you'll be prohibited from doing tomorrow. The, the, it'll be status quo, except that we're going to add this additional layer of zoning on top of the Residence A district, or more appropriately, portions of the Residence A district. And we're going to allow for greater leniency. We're going to reduce minimum requirements for lot area, reduce minimum frontage requirements. So overlay districts came about really because of um, zoning required in those areas where natural features didn't allow for eas easily demarcating a boundary. So we saw overlay districts used at the start, and they're used for all sorts of reasons now. We see them in the affordable housing context, and we see them in uh, uh, transit-oriented uh, development areas, but it started with areas around lakes and around ponds and around other sensitive environmental areas or, or, or priority habitats. The idea being that it's very difficult to say, following uh, property boundaries, we're going to draw a line behind all these various properties and say that all of these properties that we've just outlined or highlighted are within uh, a, 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 a new district. It's easy to say the overlay district is going to be measured 200 feet back from the outskirts of the lake or the pond or the environmental resource or the habitat as we've designated it on a map. So that's how overlay district got its start. Mm -hmm. It's now been utilized not only for that purpose <coughs> with respect to lakes and ponds and other water <coughs> features or environmental features, it's also been used in those other various areas. So mm -hmm. yours is a, a difficult case because you're sort of in a gray area. On the one hand, you've done an excellent job identifying the areas in purple, which are properties primarily, as Bill's described them to me, in, that are pre-existing non-conforming. Right. Um, so you could oh. simply say, and I, I, I mean it when I say simply, you could simply say, we're going to identify everything shown in purple on that map as a new lakeside residential district. We're going to remove it from the existing district. And I think you said, Bill, it's all in the same current underlying yeah, district? Yeah, it's yeah. RA. Okay. So we're going to remove it from the RA district, and we're going to pl place it into the <coughs> LR, or Lakeside yeah. Residential District, and it'll be that simple. Lakeside Residential will have um, less stringent requirements with respect to lot area, with respect to, to, to uh, maybe setbacks, frontage, other, uh, other uh, bulk and height requirements, mm -hmm. um, and you could simply do that. The alternative would be you could determine that you need to place an overlay, choose to place an overlay district in those areas mm -hmm. within the RA district, and the overlay district zoning would include those same sorts of provisions. So, so uh, just a quick question. So, there's sometimes a conflict between the two different, um, when you have an overlay and another zoning district between the two, which one to follow, and sometimes it's not clear. Even, you know, in Dudley and other towns that have come across. Um, so, it causes more problems where they have a, a, a business overlay and a residential overlay, and they're like, well, wh which set of rules are we going by? Um, you, you mentioned, you know, the fact that, you know, if, if you know involving the citizens and their involvement them awareness of, of changing the zoning district and stuff like that you know so um, that's where a lot of this inputs come from is, is from the zba members you know people who live up on the on witten uh, reservoir as well as walm lake who live there and, and you know they're, they're the ones facing the burden right. of this and stuff like that so um you know I, I just see i see the problem with overlays where towns literally um come across just more and more problems of misunderstanding of what an overlay is, where it's used. To, to your point, you mentioned, you know, overlays are for like affordable housing districts or for aquifers, you know, that's commonly where you see them, for, for you know, DEP, you know, uh, watershed protections and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for, for zoning over top of zoning, I see where it causes more legal issues and stuff like that. W wouldn't you just tell us pros and cons? Yeah, yeah so so that, that's that's a con. And we've right. got, we've okay. got you know, in, in the CPT 
see seminar that I give, we've got you know pages in our in our PowerPoint presentation that talk about pros and cons. One of the cons is that overlay districts, particularly if they're not drafted correctly, can be confusing. Um, and towns that like the concept of overlay districts sometimes tend to overuse overlay districts, and they they pile overlays on top of overlays, mm -hmm. and that's the challenge. I, I had occasion to review for a private client of mine just a few weeks ago a district that my client said was an underlying zoning district, and I read it and said, gosh, it's, it's structured like an overlay, mm -hmm. but it didn't call itself an overlay. It didn't say in the introductory provisions that this district is superimposed over the underlying district. It didn't say if there's a conflict between this district. Surely enough, as I read through it and as I did some investigation, it was an overlay, but it was so poorly drafted, the reader didn't know that. Yeah. And it was not clear whether it was su supplementing or supplanting the underlying zoning district requirements. So you've got to be very clear. I don't think that that in and of itself is necessarily uh, enough of reason to not utilize overlay districts in the right circumstances, and I'm not saying that this is necessarily the right circumstance. But I think that if it's drafted clearly and mm -hmm. if the public is educated, you want to be very specific early on. You want to have an applicability section that says this overlay district is superimposed upon the underlying districts. Mm -hmm. In the event of a conflict between the provisions of the underlying district and this overlay district, supersedes. the overlay district com supersedes. supersedes, correct. Mm -hmm. um, or you want to provide an option. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's two types of overlay districts. There's those that are meant to add greater restrictions like watershed protection. Mm -hmm. Watershed protection overlay districts don't open the door to greater development or more intense development. Mm -hmm. They restrict development. Restrict it. Restrict it. Yeah, but then you've, got, then you've got Chapter 40R Smart Growth Overlay Districts, and those are meant to open the door to new possibilities, allow for mm -hmm. more dense development that wouldn't be allowable pursuant to the underlying mm -hmm. district. It doesn't take away any rights that somebody would have if their property is zoned RA and they can build one or two or three single-family homes there, mm -hmm. but it gives them an opportunity to potentially build 50 residences there if they follow the requirements of the overlay district. Well, well that, that's one of the things we've, we've gone back and forth on is, is the fact that we are going to put restrictions in it that you still have to meet the Title V separation and, you know what I mean, our Board of Health, you know, not not just the fact that it's a 5,000 square foot lot, but you still have to meet the water and sewer separation. And, and setbacks and that, set that are not going to put people on, <coughs> on the property line. Correct. Right, right. But then the agreement also came up where if at some point, in, you know, we could be long gone, they do bring in water and sewer. Mm -hmm. Now you could be opening up Pandora's No, 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 no. But you, that if, if you so have you private have water, to, private sewer, you know, you'd have to meet well, the separation. I'm just, I'm just saying, and that's where, I don't know which one would be better off, where this is where we're looking at it today, yeah. but in 20 years, would you have more clout either as an overlay or as zoning as far as what goes on? It wouldn't matter. It would be certainly easier to rescind the overlay because you're not having to reimpose re yeah. re the previous zoning, okay. right? Yeah. Yeah. You could simply eliminate the overlay. Yeah. Um, but there's also going to be arguments then that our, our owners of properties or our properties within the district mm -hmm. grandfathered then because the overlay right. did apply at some point. Yeah. So it, it gets challenging and it's, it's interesting that, you know, the, the, the world of land use and zoning law is so small that I tend to have repeat conversations about these topics. Mm -hmm. I was in a meeting last night and we were discussing this very issue of the interplay between mm -hmm. land use and planning law as imposed by planning boards and zoning boards and Title V requirements and what the Board of Health wants to do or is required to right. do. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that, you know, in, in this other community that I was representing, they had adopted a new accessory apartment bylaw they thought was excellent that was going to incentivize the creation of accessory apartments. And then the Board of Health said, yeah, but all these locations it's where you've allowed work. them, now you're allowing for the creation of additional bedrooms, and none of these Intensify, properties have systems. Uh, that, the, uh, right, the yeah. system, they have three bedroom systems, not four or five bedroom sure. systems, so great, you've made it really easy for them to get their accessory apartment, but now they've got to rip up <coughs> and replace their septic system, or we can't sign off on it. But either, in either so, case, whether yeah. it's the overlay or the um, district, can we not have language in there that says that if, if public sewerage is brought to or and, and or water, that that, that would... I mean, it would then take conservation out of the whole situation, right? Board of Health, you mean? Board, Board of Health, yeah. 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 It, it, it would. If you have one or the other. And, and, you know, and I think that's your, your But we should point. put that language the, in there. The, the issue one. came out where, important on some of these lots, like we were saying about being able to subdivide them, right? Yeah. That's the problem. No where subdivide. Right now, that yeah. can't happen. Yeah. But you brought in water and sewer, where it's their small lots, some of these lots a little bit larger than that. Then you can start subdividing everything because you don't have to worry about something. Right. So, uh, what language or which avenue would be best to prevent that from? I, I think thing. that's what the language is we're looking date? for. Is it a date? Is it a date? This date, you may not. That's, that's, that's the language we're, we're that's looking for. That's the problem yeah. that we're running into. Where sure. 
is right now, sure, it's great. It, it is what it is. You can't do anything. But down the road, you could start subdividing all this stuff. And now, instead of 50 homes, now you got 200 homes. Right. So your current requirements you are, are 90,000 mm -hmm. and 200 feet of frontage. Right. And you're current. looking to reduce them to 5,000 and 50 feet. But the issue right. is maybe that applies to 75% of the homes within the new district, overlay or otherwise. The other 25% might have 10,000 square feet and 100 feet of frontage, right. and so they could be subdivided. No, it's not but can we add that. language that if the lot was not established prior or, <coughs> to the, you know, or, or after this time, you know, through an A&R process yeah. or whatever, that they cannot be subdivided? Is there any language we can put in that? So you can. So you, you, yeah. you're on a yeah. risk, and it's right. the language. That, that's that's what I mean. And, and what's the risk? Yeah. 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 yeah, so so the risk is, and it's cited in the agenda item you see here that I said uniformity requirements, yeah. spot yeah. zoning, yeah. presumptive yeah. validity. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an issue that relates to overlay zoning, but even if you pursued a, a new underlying zoning district with these reduced requirements, but you included a provision yeah. where you chose a date, a date of adoption, and said right. there can be no further subdivision, the question becomes, are you treating similarly situated properties in a similar fashion? Right. And the uniformity requirements of Chapter 40A, Section 4 require that. The case law that, that has followed requires that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you all are familiar generally with the concept of spot zoning, where you mm -hmm. single out yeah, a right. property or a group right. of properties for either more onerous or more yeah. beneficial treatment. It applies to overlay district zoning, although I will tell you that in all the years that overlay district zoning has been used, there's not a single case where the overlay district has been invalidated on spot zoning grounds. So that's sure. a okay. potential benefit to using to yeah. using overlay district zoning. Um, but the other red flag for potential violation of uniformity is when you begin using dates, because now you're essentially distinguishing between similarly situated properties based only on a date. Now, I think if it's drafted carefully, it can withstand a challenge, because I, I, there have been challenges. There's case law where uh, Bill Ricca, I think, had a provision for years, and in fact, it may be still be in their bylaw, um, where they um, provided more generous treatment than Chapter 48, Section 6 with respect to pre-existing non-conforming structures, mm -hmm. but it was based upon the date, a, a particular date. The lot had to exist on that date, and if the lot was brought into creation afterwards through subdivision or otherwise, it didn't benefit from those same yeah. same additional. So you're saying the district the district might have a better lockdown on that with language asterisk that the the adoption of this date the lot should be you know, um, frozen into yeah. any subdivision? Yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think you could do it. You yeah. could do it in the underlying zoning or an overlay. I don't think it, it, it's stronger or weaker one versus mm -hmm. the other, but right. you could work language like that. Into but the I think we want sure. to, didn't we all want to be super clear on that? Yeah. That we're no, not no, no, suggesting. Like that, that was a fear factor going down the road. Oh, yeah. 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 Not necessarily today. Ernie, you too, right? So we don't want anybody subdividing. Yeah. So, I know, regardless of overlay or otherwise, I'm just saying. I really don't understand why we're doing this at all to begin with. <laughs> I mean, I don't see it as the best interest of the town. I think the zoning is okay the way it is. I've lived in town all my life. I've seen the reservoir with all these camps on it, and now all of a sudden they're all year-round homes. They got relief from zoning to build their home there. I'm sorry, that what you have is what you have. If you can't fit a garage on there, you can't fit a garage on there. If you can't put a shut-up, you can't put a shut-up. I don't know why... You have to go through all this. And you will have neighbors. If we have a forum, they're going to come out, and some will be in favor. Some are going to go, wait a second. I don't want that house any closer than it is now. And there's going to be both sides of this. So let me ask a question, and, and I don't want to muddy the waters here for you. Yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been going in the direction of either a new zoning district or potentially you know, a, an overlay. Whether it's underlying or overlay, it's going to look something like yep. that. Is it safe to say that with respect to these properties that are roughly 5,000 square feet with 50 feet of frontage, you've captured most of them along these lakes and water bodies in purple? Are there are there a lot that lie elsewhere? And there's the probably others throughout well, the like town. Sporadic. Cedar Street over there has bigger properties, very big properties, yeah. but it's not included in that. We didn't include it because they were uh, two acres and they met current zoning and stuff like that. Or near current um, zoning. And so I guess so my question is... So there's downtown areas like yeah. Village Residential, which is a 20,000, and there's some lots down in the village residential you know give you an five. idea that's in the yellow yeah the, the, you know the yellow area yep. that are five thousand or four thousand square foot lots and stuff like that that are you know those are largely sewer yeah they okay. sewer base and stuff like that and, and the only reason i asked the question is a, another potential approach and to go back to the barica example would be rather than adopt 
a new underlying zoning district or adopt an overlay. If your objective here is to provide some relief to individuals who own lots or, or, or homeowners who own, own houses on lots of 5,000 square feet of 50 feet of frontage so they don't have to come to you or to your zoning board of appeals for every little thing they want to do to their properties, you could adopt a provision that mimics 40A6, and I know you've got nonconformities already addressed mm -hmm. in your zoning. You could provide more generous protection. The legislature has been very clear, the courts have been clear, that Chapter 40A6 provides the baseline of protection. Municipalities are free to grant greater protection. So you could identify lots with 5,000 square feet and 50 feet of frontage, which already benefit from the protections of 40A6, and grant them additional protections, indicate that they don't require even the relief that 40A6 mandates. They don't require special permits or findings if certain things are being done. To go back to the example of Newburyport, and I know it well because I do a fair amount of private work there, Newburyport allows the building commissioner to sign off on all sorts of minor modifications to nonconformities without having to go to zoning board. Their no, agenda is no, still no, three pages there's long. a little history on that, yeah. right? <laughs> so. No, 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 but like, like uh, you know, I mean, um, I think the concern is that, you know, you know the, the, the way the way you can move this forward without actually putting people in conforming, you, you're kind of burying like another policy inside of something that I mean we, we already have an overlay district with uh, aquifers and, and everything else in there, so we're going to run across this situation because it's considering all bodies of water, right. so we're going to we're going to be having an overlay of an overlay. No, we, no, that's not true. There's no overlay of an overlay. Uh, assuming no, no, Lakeside it, Residential would be an overlay. If Lakeside Residential was an overlay, you'd have an overlay of an no, overlay. No, our, our aquifer protection doesn't go up that that far in any of these areas. <coughs> Adam, I, I was going to raise the question. It, the goal, as I understood it from the board, was to provide for relief yeah. for the existing dwellings that are occupied out at these areas. Okay? Mm -hmm. And... The concern I have is with, with an, a zoning district change would be unintended consequences. So are we going to create the possibility for new subdivision right. or yeah. are we going to um, possibly um, take away some, some status that some of these people might enjoy um, under you know, the zoning, by, uh, zoning act? Uh, so, so those things that we're not focused on are what my concerns are. Um, and, and then we could open Pandora's box, if you will. Um, and that's why I was more inclined to go with an overlay district where we specifically identify the qualifiers, keep the underlaying zoning the way it is, and then identify qualifiers that, that standards that you have to meet for the lakeside residential to apply. Sure. So, so it's not it's not a rezoning in the sense that you've you've got replacement zoning in all these locations. You've got the overlay, and the overlay <coughs> may, or may not apply to what you see in purple. It's going to overlay everything you see in purple, but whether it applies depends upon the particular that you identify in the zoning bylaw. Correct. Sure. And that would be the biggest or, thing is how that's written. Yeah. That would or, be the it will, it, it, the yeah, art correct. of yeah. It, the language when that's done. I mean, and that could take some time to make sure, cross the T's and not the I's, and hopefully you don't forget anything. But, but no town meeting. What? No, you still need it. Or well, either way. Yeah, no matter what. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but or we could do nothing, and have people go to zoning for relief as they do now. Just the whole big can of worms we've opened up. Why? To so just so somebody doesn't have to go to zoning to get some relief. Is it worth all this hassle? Well, yes and no. I see both sides of it. Well, uh, where you're you're, to help the people you could be a neighbor of mine and you're in one of these lots, right, and you want to pump a shed, I don't have to go in front of anybody and build a shed. Yeah. But yet, you're next door and you have to go pull teeth to try to get a shed put up hmm. because you're in yeah. the wrong area. You're yeah. not conforming. I th I think so the, it, it's just yeah. acting as where you can put up a shed by changing some of the requirements on your setbacks. Yeah. And, and, and you're elected to help to move the town forward, not yeah. so I, I, I see both not necessarily nice. moving it forward. You have a process now. Yeah. And, and all well, the stuff we're talking about, right. I don't know, is it going to be any better? They can go to zoning for relief. Yeah. I know. It's the, not the end of the world. I see both yeah. sides of it. Yeah, I yeah. see both sides. Yeah. Seems like... Yeah. We're heading down this path and not really coming to 
uh, to have a good grip on what will happen or how it's going to happen yeah. and what will be better. And this is, yeah, there's this just a big fee, up, up front fee, the, going through the ZBA and stuff like that. Not just the time, right? You know I mean? Yeah. And, and then there's appeals and decisions and yeah, right. I mean, so I've, I've heard all sorts of justifications for it, and I can appreci appreciate that perspective right. too. So I, I'm not. The decision is yours. Um, the the arguments that I've heard for adopting some sort of zoning that's particular to these sorts of properties that would otherwise be non-conforming is to eliminate what is perceived as sort of case by case determinations by some sort of an adjudicatory body, typically the zoning board. As you say, there's the logistics of it. Applicant has to pay an application fee, has to show up. If the neighbor doesn't want something done, and maybe that's not the way things work that often in Douglas, but in other communities, I can tell you that neighbors appeal everything and anything. I have one community, sure. I probably have 50 cases with my name on the books that are land use matters currently pending because neighbors appeal everything. Mm -hmm. And so it eliminates that by allowing through the tool of zoning some some uh, minor modifications of the, without the need for, for uh, a special permit or other form mm -hmm. of relief. Um, and it eliminates that sort of case-by-case -case negotiation. You hope that your zoning board is consistent. I don't know your zoning board well. You hope that it's consistent. But I know in some communities, uh, I work with zoning boards, and I appear before zoning boards that aren't. Yeah. And so you and me, we've got similar properties. They're a quarter mile apart. They're, they'd both be in purple here if, we, if this rezoning occurred. And yet somehow you got the permit and I didn't. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that that's, can be an issue. And, and yeah. That, that's that a big issue. It's always an issue with yeah. the board, what, what boards do, you know. Yeah. We, we but it, it, but it shouldn't be. It's not fair. Yeah, it's not fair. It's not yeah, fair to you as a taxpayer. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, exactly what you said. I mean, why should he get it and I'm down the street and you won't give it to me because you don't like me? Mm -hmm. yeah, you don't know if that's going on or not. But, yeah. you know, it can yeah. happen. I'm not saying that, but I guess it's a gray area. I guess, could you provide us? some language, I guess, because that's what we're looking for is the, the two biggest pieces I think we, we've dealt with is, um, you know, not, not just the which way to go overlay versus a, you know, zoning district and stuff like that. Um, the biggest thing was, was the, the, the language around the board of health requirements being met before it's considered a buildable lot or anything like that, or, all right, um, that and the subdividing. Those are the two things we didn't, we, I think we were firm nose on and, or wanted something around. No matter what direction we go in, whether it's an overlay or a zoning district. And the I one mean, thing I, the one thing I hadn't appreciated before tonight, frankly, before Bill said it, is the concept that, you know, you've got, you haven't simply highlighted or colored in purple, lots that are five thousand square feet with fifty feet of frontage. You've got some in there that are ten thousand square feet oh, yeah. and yeah. hundred yeah. feet of frontage, yeah. and some that are fifteen thousand square feet and hundred and fifty feet of frontage. So yeah. some that are much larger than yeah. That. Right. Well, it, it, and the, the goal was that was that was because they weren't even the two acres and two hundred feet of frontage meeting those requirements right. and stuff like that. Right. And this was really just an initial pass of going around there to say, hey, we don't want to quote spot zone, so let's let's go around and, and tag all the properties that are in that area that can be easily identified that are small. Some, uh, or quite a few, who, who have gone before the ZBA for, for request of decks and additions and everything like that. And so, you know, where they're paying, again, to, to the point of relief, where they need relief, where they're, they're not going to go forward to, you know, they, they did the front deck and now they want to do a side deck and it's another $2,600 in fees to go get ZBA, you know, permits and approval before you put the deck on. What so, you know, you got, you got to also consider, I mean, I, I'm not sure how the assessors work things down there under the hall, but... If, if you have a five acre piece, let's say, now do they start counting up those lots as potentially buildable lots because you have the frontage and area now? Well, no, well, I, 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 that's I think, I think we get the language. The that's the way we want it. where it can't be subdivided, that's so I think it that's stays the, that's what the two it is. We want. It was, and it's all was the language around it to, to, to right. lock it down. Existing structures. It, yeah, exist, right. existing parcels well, and existing and, structures. And, and I think that, although you may not know it, I think that collectively mm -hmm. you're you're advocating for the overlay district route versus the underlying district route uh, versus, versus underlying zoning because what you're hoping to achieve is much more difficult to do when you're recreating or, or rezoning with new underlying zoning in the entire area you see in purple. Because how are you restricting subdivision? Owners of property have certain rights pursuant to subdivision control law. If you have, if you've got adequate frontage on an existing leg, mm -hmm. you can submit an A and R plan to the planning board, and the planning board can't deny it if it determines you've got the adequate right. frontage. So in the way, but the overlay, but the overlay, you can stop that. 
you, you can't stop the subdivision, but you can certainly not extend the protections that you that you would okay. otherwise extend. So, Correct. Okay. So the, the, the Board of Health issue between the septic and the well is one of the most paramount mm -hmm. obstacles unless this public comes in. And people do have lots of 5,000 square feet and across private roads they have another 5,000 square feet which they needed where they keep their septic tank because of the distance issues. Okay. Does that, if somehow they... <laughs> Does that become a building lot, you know, like a, a raw piece of 5,000 square foot land on a private way? Does, you know, I, they're probably not going to get the distance separation, but well, does that well, open a can? No, not, if we, not if we structure the overlay district the way that you're describing it being structured. So there's two pieces here. There's, one is what lots are we providing protection to within the overlay? Mm -hmm. And then the second is also including some provision within the overlay district zoning that refers to something beyond your jurisdiction that you can't determine as part of your review or the zoning board's review, which is the fact that it's all subject to board of health. So it has to be like primary okay. houses, okay. initial well, primary houses. Go ahead. Yes, okay. I, I think so. Uh, but there are always engineering ways to achieve what you're talking about. Um, you could have a common septic field located mm -hmm. on a remote parcel. Oh, God. There, yeah, but but awesome. Aaron, this this could happen. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you could, you know, carve up ten lots, they could all go to one septic system that's in back line somewhere. Yeah. You know. Right. But but neighbors do have, you know, where they have their septic mm -hmm. tank on the other side of a private I guess mm -hmm. I live there. Yeah, few and all between. of a sudden where well, they're gonna put another house on this five thousand yeah. square foot and that cannot happen. I mean it, it'd be in well, the court in a matter of minutes somehow. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. adjacent parcels and something yeah. like that. Yeah, common ownership. Yeah. But I mean, that's what you're running into. I mean, so so I, I've got a good sense as to what you want to achieve, and right. I think it can be achieved. It's just we've got to be very careful on how we craft the language, mm -hmm. yeah. and it needs to be reviewed by this board, needs to be reviewed by by Bill, and we've got to ensure that not only practically does it work, but that it ultimately achieves your objective and it is is foolproof because right. the, the the problem with zoning is that. Once it's adopted, it's adopted. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so circumstances change, but the zoning doesn't unless you go through that same zoning amendment right. process. So it, it's, it's a fair thing to consider. Well, what happens if in the future, maybe you have no plans to sue or any of these areas right now, but what happens if 20 years from now right. you do? The zoning's still going to be in existence unless it gets rescinded between now and 20 years from now. Well, or another, another town has it and they allow you to tap in. Right. You know, and then mm -hmm. we, that happens. Yeah. So you never know on that aspect of it. So, so yeah, I, I think that's our biggest thing is is those two issues that we've highlighted. You know I mean, the separation with the board of health, and then the you know not allowing lots to be. But but to be fair to to Mike and I, definitely for one of these things happening, mm -hmm. the proverbial can of worms, you know. So oh, I just it's it's relief. Yeah. At but, the end of the day, I think it's it's well intended what yeah. we're doing, but. Yeah. You know. hmm. yeah. The overlay sounds like it's yeah. definitely the way. More, more practical way. I think the overlay district, in light of all the most of you have said, can better fit your needs. I think it's easier to structure an overlay and achieve what it is that you want to achieve than it would be to do it with the underlying zoning. Of course, the elephant in the room is, do you want to do it at all? I know you've had a couple, a couple of you have said that you know maybe you don't want to open the can of worms. So. Again, I don't have a, a, a horse in the race here, but yeah. it, if it's the desire of the board to, to try and put something together and work through it, it's not going to happen overnight. I'm happy to work with Bill. Um, you know, Bill knows the, the specifics of these lots and um, where the larger parcels lie, and um, he certainly knows what it is you want to achieve. So we can work together to, to put a draft together. So, so we, do, we do have an agreement with CMRPC to, to draft something, mm -hmm. but I would say regardless of what we do, we send it. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, actually, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, and yeah. if you got, you already have initial language or anything like that, it's definitely gonna be worthwhile. Yeah. You know, I mean, that that thing that's that was the pieces we were missing, yeah. and we knew we knew we were gonna have to address those in any article or anything that we would vote. Sure. You know what I mean? Well, I'm happy to work with CMRPC too. Okay. I work with them yeah. in other communities. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's our yeah. pieces that we need. Okay. I think we um, need to give them a closer direction, though. I mean, well, at this point, I think maybe we table a vote if we're going to take a vote. I know Tracy's not Tracy, here, and she's yeah. very. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah she, she, she's very yeah. into this, um, so I don't know if we want to vote tonight. But no, I don't, I don't want to vote. Uh, tonight. No. Yeah. Uh, and the other reason Adam came in tonight was to briefly talk about. Um, I know we were talking about solar bylaws yeah, yeah. and how the Dover Amendment may have a role. With the solar bylaws, we, we were talking about maybe making certain size solar arrays 
the larger mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm. require a special permit process and have by right a certain threshold under that size. Sure. So I attempted, not knowing how much time we'd have, because I was primarily asked to come to talk yes. about the overlay district zoning. So I attempted to put into the agenda here a little bit more substance on the topic of solar bylaws. And the challenge with solar bylaws is there's not a lot out there. So, you know, we, we, we talk about the Dover Amendment. So Dover Amendment provided protection for educational uses and religious uses. Then by way of separate legislation, there was the protection offered for agricultural uses. Yeah. Well, that was all back in 1950. And then I think agriculture came in, in the late 50s. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until 1985 or later that the solar energy system protection was worked into chapter 48 section 3 so it's much newer and you can see here in the agenda I've, I've uh, provided a couple of bullets just compare the language so agenda item number four the protection for religious and educational uses says that no municipality can quote prohibit regulate or restrict the use of land or structures for religious or educational purposes, okay? Prohibit, regulate, or restrict the use. Then you've got agricultural uses, and they use the legislature in its infinite wisdom decided to use some slightly different language. Instead of, <laughs> instead of saying prohibit, regulate, or restrict the use, it said prohibit, unreasonably regulate, or require a special permit for. Well, the good news is, despite what the legislature did, the courts have generally interpreted the religious, the educational, and the agricultural exemptions consistent with one another. Yeah. You, you can't prohibit in any location within your community. Yeah. You can't unreasonably regulate. You can't require a special permit for these sorts of uses. They're exempt uses. Mm -hmm. And you see that in your zoning, it reflects, you can put a church wherever you want to put a church. Mm -hmm. You can put a public school wherever you want to put a public school. Mm -hmm. Well, then they came up with the, and this is agenda item number one, the language in 48.3 a addressing solar energy systems. No zoning ordinance or bylaws shall prohibit or unreasonably regulate. So it doesn't talk about restricting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't talk about requiring a special permit for. Yeah. So the sense, and this is what a lot of secondary sources say, the sense is that the solar energy system exemption is meant to be not as extensive, not as broad an exemption as education, religion, or agriculture. That's the sense. Mm -hmm. The problem is there are six total reported cases that even reference the solar energy system. I checked again this morning to make sure I hadn't missed one. <laughs> six total cases that have been reported. Four of those cases, well, three of those cases, they were, they were decided on motions for summary judgment that related to issues of standing and nothing to do with the actual substance of the exemption. So you can see here, I've cited to the only three cases that exist mm -hmm. that give us any guidance. Mm -hmm. So what we have is these three cases, item number six in the yep. agenda, yep. and then we have item two on the, uh, excuse me, item three on the agenda, which is me referencing this DOER attachment, which I also provided to Bill in the email. I don't know if you have yes. it. Yes. Yep. And you can see the DOER, I, there are more caveats in the two-page attachment than, than you can imagine, because DOER isn't quite short either back in 2014 when, this, when their guidance document was, was written or today. They're not quite sure either the scope of the solar energy system exemption. But what they've said is, mm -hmm. it seems pretty clear that you should be allowing by right, and it probably falls within the scope of the exemption, and it doesn't sound like it's an issue for you at all, roof-mounted, small and medium-scale right. solar photovoltaic installations. Which okay. we need to identify what that is, small and medium. Yeah, yeah very important. Because that, that, that's, what, that's what got us, because we looked at another town, small, and it was 1,200 panels you know, covering, covering an acre, 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 acre and a half acres. or something. No, nine yeah. acres. Nine acres. acres. Twelve hundred panels. Yeah. Right. That was their small. Right. right. So we need to. Right. <laughs> we need to find out. You do. And there's, you know, you can you can do it by panels. You can do it okay. by um, kilowatts. By kilowatts, which is most frequent. But then you got to make sure you're comparing AC to DC because there's a difference between the two. So you just need to yeah. be sure well, three your phase, two phase, two. Nameplate yeah. yeah. capacity and whatnot. So. Okay. Um, so there are different ways to to to, to uh, differentiate between the small, medium, and large scale. Let's talk just about the large scale now because it sounds like that's the focus and that is the focus for most municipalities. Once you define what large scale is, can you prohibit them? Can you allow them everywhere by special permit? Are you obligated to allow them in some locations by right and in other locations by special permit? The standard is unreasonable regulation. Mm -hmm. So my fear would be, I can answer the first question, you can't prohibit them everywhere, mm -hmm. right? My mm -hmm. fear would be that you place them on special permit in every location and then you deny the first three that ever come before you. Because special permits are discretionary tools. You can deny special permits. It's not like a site plan approval, mm -hmm. generally non-discretionary. 
that would be my fear. And then the, the third developer says, well, enough is enough, challenges you, you get to court, and they say, okay, so it doesn't say in the, in the bylaw prohibited, but it's a de facto prohibition because effectively that's what they've done. Mm -hmm. They place it on special permit, and then every applicant that comes first, it comes forward, gets denied. Mm -hmm. What most communities have done that have chosen to adopt the sort of zoning is either allowed it everywhere by right, and then placed it on a site plan review to provide some mechanism to check. And that's them. what we're doing. We've been doing, right? Yeah, it's just site plan review. Yeah. Or they've determined that, well, we're okay with them in most. We're okay with them in our industrial district, in our commercial district, in our mixed use district, but we don't want them in our residential district. And so they prohibited them, prohibited them in the residential district, and they've allowed them by mm -hmm. by uh, special permit or ideally by site plan review in all the other districts. I think by at least allowing them in mm -hmm. some districts by right, mm -hmm. it, it and not, I don't mean you know yeah. not subject to any review, I yeah. mean through a site plan review process, yeah. it provides you with some cover because if you look at these cases, the yeah. Briggs case, so, the, yeah. in, in all these cases, yeah. the court determined that it's not unreasonable regulation if you've allowed it in some locations just because you're disallowing it in other locations. Unlike yeah. agriculture, yeah. unlike education, unlike religion, mm -hmm. where you couldn't disallow it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that, that flies, yeah. Re restricting what area you could have well, them. We think so. What zone. We, th we think so. There's no case that yeah. says it flies, but there's no case that says it doesn't. And these three cases involved yeah. Yeah. circumstances where it was allowed in one location and disallowed in others, and the court generally said as long as that's not considered to be unreasonable regulation, which is based on the facts and circumstances of every case, yeah. then we think it's okay. The court didn't say, no, 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 we're invalidating this at, at, uh -huh. at first glance because you're prohibited it in one district and you can't do that. So the courts so far have not given mm. solar energy systems the same protection that they've given religion, right, agriculture, right, right. and education. Yeah. So, so the, the 2020 solar regs you know, for reimbursement only allows it in a industrial or commercial business area. So it cannot be in a residential for its reimbursement rates. Okay. So that kind of solves that problem for us. So I think I think we, we were more concerned with allowing it to be the Wild Wild West in, in the residential area. Mm -hmm. But the, the reimbursement rates is you have to qualify whether you're in a commercial or business or industrial area to get reimbursed now. So. And, and, and I will tell you that I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable saying to you that you can consider prohibiting it in certain locations because you're not you're not going to be an outlier. Okay. This is being done across Lush, the state. Lush, okay. um, many, many other municipalities have adopted zoning that is prohibited in certain locations and allowed it in other locations. Um, you could be the first one that's challenged and taken up to the SJC. Can't promise that, but <laughs> I, I can tell you that. F and again, look at these cases. Like the the Briggs case a fee, is yeah. a land court case. <laughs> yeah. The Dusso case is a land court. These aren't even appellate level cases. These are trial court cases. Sure, yeah. um, the Waller case was also in a land court case. So we got three cases that exist out there that, it, and they're all trial level cases, all from the land court. Mm -hmm. But our three, the ones that we've allowed under site plan review, have been in. You're talking about right versus site plan review have been in the residential the, 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 Well, site plan review is pretty much by right. By right. It's covered yeah. everywhere. But but also the, the ones we've approved in the residential areas because they're the solar reimbursement rates were covering those areas. They're no longer covering them starting next year. So there's nothing. Oh, the negotiations that went on. Yeah, they're not yet. No, for the next the next three years. Yeah, I'm just saying. It'll cover for the next three years and after that it's a problem. Yeah. Yes. Well, they're moving them away, you know, less and less. Even the roof mounts, the roof mounts are dropping from 35% reimbursement rate down to oh, the S Rex. The S Rex is just falling. disintegrated. Correct, correct. Everything right. else is just dropping. We even noticed it under this, the um, S Rex 2. Yeah. There's a drop from 420, 440 yeah. to 300. Yeah, it's dropping. And they're claiming, you know, these companies that agree yeah. they want bank, they want to say they want to go bankrupt. That's where you um, want to renegotiate. That's why when Mayor Beth did hers in the yes. back, it's yeah. because the reimbursement rate was. Next year is dropping down by five points. Well, this is and, and, and then it's like another program. eight points. Yeah. So. Yep. I mean, we haven't we haven't had anybody come in for anything. <coughs> Recently, residential, rural, rural agricultural have been the, the three biggest ones we've had in town. So right. Yeah. 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 And we've got the other two that were already established. The Bosmas and yeah. Gius. Yeah. yeah. And those Gius would be in village residential, and Bosmas in village. No, uh, commercial. Commercial. Uh, views, commercial, commercial, and, yeah. and the other one's industrial. Industrial. Is there a distinction in some of this stuff? Addressing yeah. size? Yeah. No. Well, we're going <laughs> out roof mounted. 
and be allowed maybe and whereas uh, standalone you know whatever they're called the standalone units not or I mean is that um, yeah so so there's 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 two divisions there's roof mounted versus ground mounted ground mounted and then amongst the ground mounted most communities have differentiated between small medium and large and that's what DOER uses so I only sent yeah. you just so I thought yeah. I overwhelm you with info I only sent you a two page excerpt from DOR but if you just google and or I can send them yeah. to you DOER solar energy systems there's three or four guidance documents including a couple of model bylaws that show you you know they give you pro p p p potential definitions for these various terms they show you how to differentiate between small medium and large if you choose they're only examples other communities have chosen you know to, to differentiate between size most of their examples I will tell you are for by right because and you've already qualified but a lot of communities are seeking to qualify as a green community by virtue of adopting as of right zoning for solar facilities um, communities that didn't jump on on the wind the, the wind issue um, and didn't have that or didn't jump on the manufacturing research facilities for, for purposes of renewable energy are utilizing the opportunity to, to do so through uh, photovoltaic installations but two phase streets are limited to 10 kilowatts this is the way it is with national grid I mean they cannot allow more than 10 so those aren't well we're not really talking about those so no. yeah. okay Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Okay. Anybody have any questions quick for Ed before he takes off? And if you review the materials and have questions about solar or about overlay zoning, just get them to be happy to answer them. Okay. Great. 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 Yeah. I, did, I did have one question. Okay. Can I have you name and address, please? Yep. Brian Levesque, Kearney Road. Um, so I did have a question in regards going back to the Lakeside Residential. Yeah. I know we're trying to provide relief for people. I have mixed feelings about it. I live in one of these areas. I've been through the Zoning Board of Appeals on multiple occasions, and I can tell you it's a nightmare. <laughs> um, my biggest question right now is why are we trying to push 5,000 square feet when those Title V laws will not provide any relief on the new Title V setback requirements of 100 feet? You can't fit on a 5,000 square foot lot. You can't fit a septic system yeah, on well. yeah. So I understand, I guess my question as somebody who lives there is, is there a way that we could provide the, the relief for the existing people that are there that are pre-existing non-conforming, but at the same time, maybe reduce those ridiculous RA setback requirements uh, for undeveloped areas that could potentially still encompass maybe 15,000 square feet versus 5,000 square feet. You're basically saying either only the existing houses are gonna get relief and nobody else will, or we're not gonna do anything. Or you're saying everybody's gonna get relief, but you really don't have relief because you can't meet Title V laws, which I think makes it confusing. So I guess my question is, as a resident who deals with this, is there a way that we could almost put two different categories within, whether it's an overlay or an under, underlying district, where existing structures now have these setbacks, but new construction could potentially have reduced from what it is existing, but greater than what the... The, um, so the goal is not to... So the goal for who, though? So, so the goal is not to create new construction, it's to provide relief to the Structures that are but there's parcels there that yeah. you know could be. We don't. We don't want. Well. We don't want. But who? Zoning to change. You don't want that. But maybe other people do. Is my well, point. Well, then, then, yeah. and then that would be voted on at town meeting if that came up. Yeah. You know what I mean. I mean. So I, I'm just looking for you guys to think about all possibilities, yeah. and we don't. Like Bill said, we don't know all the possibilities. We don't know what pops up, and you said it too, Ernie. Down the road from yeah. this. Yeah. Down the road. But yeah, exactly. I just so want the board to consider that as well. There are other factors involved that yep. you're not even considering. We'll take it into consideration yep. for sure. Uh, so yeah, so, so, so we'll just for consideration, if, if within these areas you have one parcel that is 90,000 square feet and has 200 feet of frontage, and they're there, yeah. um, do you want to reduce the setbacks for that? I mean, otherwise no. it's fully conforming. Right, it's fully conforming and, and, and you yeah. can do what you want. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we right, so yeah. so um, the, the other, so you could potentially be creating more lots again on that, but. Yeah, you um, want to do that though. And, and to Brian's point regarding the septic, there's always a way ar around the Title V issues. Um, you could do a package treatment plant. And you know, if, if the folks out at that area started 
all having contaminated wells, something would have to get done. So in doing that, you know, you provide a solution and probably become a town issue. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that came up it, once before years ago about uh, about a, a central septic system for that area. Oh, yeah. Right, right. The, 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 the back land, up, I think, at uh, the top of Birchell Road yeah. was supposed to be actually a, a treatment plant up there. Yeah. We own 18 acres up there. Right. That was supposed to be the treatment plant and stuff like that for that area. As a neighbor. But, but, but I think I think until we get the language back from Adam and stuff like that, you know, of the things, the two big issues we want to make that sure. That biggest concern is that we don't start creating correct, correct. Until we get the language a back. whole bunch of small lots. It, 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 if you want to give relief to the people that correct. live on these that, lots that already have non-conforming structures, to, but, to but to point. create lots to be yeah. able to build these type of structures further on down the line is the go, the go, the not goal, in the, the goal best was, the goal was in the goal, I think, when we talked about this, wasn't to create additional lots where someone's got a 20,000 no, square foot and start shopping out. We, we got to look at the possibility of somebody bringing that up and that right. happening. Right. And the language. So that's what we have to look at. Yep. We have to have but all those answers. We have I guess we, that was my question yeah. for, for Adam was, is there a way, just a consideration, to do that where you can increase, and I'm not saying 5,000 square feet, but I'm saying... 15, 20,000, 25,000 square feet where somebody could pop a house. Maybe they do own three or four lots in a row. If you, if you have 20,000 square feet and 200 feet of front, you have a conforming lot. No, already. you don't oh, because you don't have 90,000 square feet that the RA requires. I mean, I, I'm saying, I, yeah, I mean, if, you have, if you have the two acres and the 200 feet of front, I'm you I'm not you, saying nobody's got two acres. There's nobody then, 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 in the Then you can't, you can't subdivide it and you can't I'm not stop creating lots. It. I'm asking from Adam, not from Ernie, is there a way to put language in there really? that okay. can reduce yeah. that? I'm just asking uh, from his professional opinion. Yeah, okay. Is there a way? That's, so, not, so that's not the goal of what we're trying to do. Though. Okay. If, if it were the goal, it could be accomplished. I mean, the challenge that I foresee here when you're trying to treat properties with structures on them differently from vacant properties and you're trying to apply a different set of bulk size dimensional regulations to these two different categories of properties within the same district, I see a potential challenge under the uniformity clause, mm -hmm. um, which is why I had said earlier another potential approach would be to just simply, in lieu of crafting a new overlay district, would be to provide grandfathered, greater grandfather protection to existing structures, improve lots. Can that be accomplished through an overlay? Sure, but to, section to, six, right under forty-eight six. But I mean, can, can you can you do it if if your only goal is to provide the protection to lots with structures? Can you do that with an overlay? Sure, but I think trying to trying to treat you know different categories of properties, improved versus unimproved, five thousand square feet versus between five thousand square feet and ninety thousand square feet versus more than ninety thousand square feet, and to, to to treat all of those within the same overlay district, but to treat them all somewhat differently, I think you're just sort of asking to to Trouble. be challenged. Yeah. 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 That answer your question. Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Thank you. Great. You're welcome. Yeah, Thanks, thank Adam. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Nice we'll to see be you in all. touch with you again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to okay. see you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank, thank, you thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Okay. Moving along. I think it's item on our agenda. Yep. Public hearing. Yeah. Rebecca Janel Janelnik. So Joan. Yeah. Segelnik, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's not fault. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Andy. And, and Robert N. All right, application for an accessory apartment special permit 112 in the Maples. And I'm going to read the uh, public hearing notes. In accordance with the Town of Douglas Accessory Apartment Zoning Bylaw and Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 48, the Douglas Planning Board is holding a public hearing on the application of Rebecca and uh, Robert DeMarco for an accessory apartment special permit. Property location is 112 Maple Street, Assessors Map 194, Parcel 2, Douglas, Mass. Public hearing is being held on Tuesday, December 10th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. Yeah. in the Community yeah. Meeting Room, Municipal Football. Center, 49 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass. Oh, yeah. Good A copy of the application may be reviewed in the Community Development Department during regular business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the proposed plan should appear at the time and place designated. Ernest Marks, Jr. Chairman, Douglas Planning Board. Public hearing is now open. So 
That's everywhere, guys. Okay. Are you doing the presenting, or do you? I. No idea. You know what? I I don't really know what I'm doing. I, I so apologize. Oh, okay. I guess well, I'm, just, I'm asking the board to um, yeah. please um, renew our application permit. We had one when um, my mother owned the property, and I lived in the apartment, yep. and then I had a baby, mm -hmm. and I needed more room, so then I bought the house from her, and I moved in the house, and now she's in the apartment. Yeah. So she came before like the last meeting. Right. Yeah. 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 Pretty uh, Discussed it all with yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And my understanding is nothing's changed from other than the occupants. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly. so well, um, the original one did lapse uh, at the time they made the property transfer, which is why we required um, another Table filing. Yeah. Um, we did reduce the fee, so it's a typical renewal fee, so it's $50. Yeah. Um, and aside from that, um, everything's the same, is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so um, it seems pretty procedural. We did draft a decision that's in your to mm -hmm. be signed folder. Yeah. It's 50 bucks. Yeah, we, said, 80. we said last time that it, it was 80, so it's not $50. No, it was 50. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know what that is. Wait the application fee. I know. I know. I know. Renewal. But we said it's last time it has to be a new correct application. Okay. Correct. Not, not an extension. This is a new it's application. Yeah, it's a new application. Yeah, it's it's a new application. Waiver. The fee. Because of the change in right. the right. people. Correct. Yeah. Except for the uh, yeah. notifications. The base fee. The base fee has been waived. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, the notification is another $80 on top of the $50. Oh, no, no yes, notification. Well, butters need to be notified. Yeah, yes. yeah. butter notification yeah. had to be done. And the advertising. Yeah, yeah. Just so we're clear on the fees. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any questions cool. on it? Someone want to make a oh, motion? motion? Motion to accept? Uh, no. Uh, motion yeah. Over here. Yeah, we'll make a motion to accept the uh, accessory apartment application for 112 Maple Street for Rebecca. Janelle. 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 You're welcome. Good job with everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. No, no, there isn't public. Yes, yeah, there is. Yeah, we have to close the public hearing. Yeah, we have to close the public hearing. Usually we close the public hearing and take the first. We can do it right for us. So, motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for. Motion made by Les. One second. Seconded by Mike Z. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Staying the motion carries. <laughs> Bill's gonna be on point a little bit more. <laughs> Shut yeah, you have a point I've learned of a long time ago to not. <laughs> you have a point of order? Yeah. Or no, no, no. You guys are perfect. Yeah. Yeah. He usually helps us out with that. Yeah, we, <laughs> missed it. We, usually, we usually do the. We usually close the public hearing and do the. Yeah. Vote. Mike was can do it either way. <coughs> Get it all set and done. Unless you can't think. Let's get the Bruins game on. Yeah. While well, yeah. meetings open. No, we do both. No. You can do it either way. Okay. Cool. Then why not? Yes. All right. All right. Hang on. A and I plan. David Cahill, Ledgestone Road. Anybody here for that? David Cahill, here for that. Oh, David, hey, I didn't see you back there. <laughs> Fall asleep. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get out here early. We are. Apostles. Excuse me. Yep. Yep. Go ahead. Throw them the Spread them out, David. Okay. Jake okay. Water. There's uh, two frontage lots and back lane lots. They got kind of big, so we on two separate stamp planes here. Yeah, this is the ledge stone. Uh, you have the miners too? Please? Yeah. Okay. Doing the thing. All right. This is a uh, ledge stone road off of Northwest Main. This is not where you live? This no, I live on Lake Shore. You live on Lake Shore. Okay. Yeah. But this has been in wife's, wife's family since the 70s. And I bought 13 more acres, I don't know, 10 years ago or whatever. Huh. And now we've we got one lot here, yep. uh, two and a half acres, one 2.6. There's a total of. Yeah, this one's just over 90,000 square feet. Um, and, and the funny thing with this one, lot one, 
Um, if you look at the definitions in our zoning book, um, you can't include the right of way in the lot area, um, even though it lies within an easement on the property. Mm -hmm. So the 90,000 square feet has to be beyond that right of way area. Um, the, you know, so, so with that, that took a few times back and forth with the engineer because he was under the he was including the easement area. Yeah, yeah, okay. you can't do that. So, and uh, I think there's like six hundred and something feet frontage for these two lots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And about two and a half acres. Of, the road is in excellent shape. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, top. So it's right at the top. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, there's already an existing house there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. The, um. So. So the road is actually deeded to this property? No. So it's a private. Easement. It's a private road. Right, right. yeah. so, so currently, well, half is of that is road is away. Yeah. There so are two right. lots, right. the red lot and the green lot. Right. That's what exists now yep. for the property. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. those are being subdivided into three lots. And, and, and yes, the right of way does lie on the private properties. So anytime it does, and right well, now, one not one right one. now, it's just on lot one. Um, yeah. That is deducted from the total area. Oh, we get that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's the access so under this back lot? So, so the issue is okay. Um, as we look at these, uh, there's some steep side slopes, yeah. ten percent, yeah. and that's why I ha asked Maria to ask you guys to go out and take a look. Um, so lot three. Virtually has the entire frontage on a steep side slope, and then a portion of lot two. Yeah. They all meet Ashto requirements, and otherwise the plan meets the requirements yeah. dimensionally and presentation-wise. So the only issue is that slope. What's this? Can I ask a question about it's this? It's in the regs. Yeah. Cool. yeah. yeah. No, I, I think yeah. Bill, we'll get, Mike, and I have the same question here. Um, um, access to the where's parcel A and where's parcel B? Parcel A, a is not a buildable, this. separate buildable oh, yeah. lot. No buildable <laughs> parcel. It's just that. backland. That's just going to be all backland. That's just going to yeah. be backland. I'm just doing Mrs. Embodied. So, to, to which so the one, one in your That's packet? Right on here. This one right here. Correct. The one in your Chunk. packet was the original submittal. The checkerboard. Where's parcel A and where's parcel B? The checkerboard. All right. Um, the stripes is upside down. Yes. That was after the first plan came in, which has changed dramatically. This is what the current plan looks like. So, so okay. see, see the green? This, yeah. this thing here is here. This yeah. road is here. Yeah. Okay. That's the green. Yeah. I, know, I mean, I know right away that I drive by it every day. I just wasn't <laughs> sure on this back. Yeah, this is way yeah it's just not a build. We do that. It, it's not a separate buildable yeah. lot. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. Why is this checkered? It is no checkered. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. There's a separate plan for the back lane. So it's just not yeah. a buildable lot. And Mr. and Mrs. Lombardi uh, are butters in uh, down here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they're going to purchase the, all this okay. back lane. You're going to get on the back lane soon. Good. Yeah, that'd be a nice chunk. Mm -hmm. That's that eight acres. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice in there. And yeah. So I'm directly across from the Oak okay. Street. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so basically, it's yeah. three parcels yeah. the yeah. back land parcel, which is not built. Then we're separating it all and enables you guys to get by back land property and splits it all up. That way, there, yeah. Yeah, so the Mr. Milson body want to purchase that land. Yeah, the bottom must be parcel. Okay, nice. So they have a bigger backyard. Parcel A is the back one. Nothing like a big backyard. Um, yeah, the back. The <laughs> red one. <laughs> red one. Ooh. Firewood. Yeah. 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 And uh, that plan right there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll spread it a little bit. There. Yeah, we Fishing. spent a lot of time yeah, because. Uh, yeah. Dark, Mike. Some of those yeah. boundaries, the oh, last gotcha. yeah. <coughs> yeah, the last people that saw them were the cavemen. They, they, they had so much time trying to find them all, yeah. and they did find them all, but it just went way overboard. Yeah, <laughs> well, you gotta find, you gotta find the best. Yeah, but like I said, the cavemen, the last ones have probably seen. Them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's possible. Huh. The issue about the uh, what was it, the steepness of these. Yeah, the frontage. So, frontage so the regulations, okay. the local regulations require them to identify access limiting features. Yes. So the board has commonly held 10% mm, is, is the threshold for a potential constraint mm -hmm. on access. Mm -hmm. So I'm just pointing out that mm -hmm. the plan does show slopes in excess of 10%, mm -hmm. almost entirely on the lot three frontage, 
and probably half, not quite, maybe a third of the frontage on lot lot yeah. two. So, was, is that? I think it's was it a tow pole coming down, or is it just is something? Is it going down from the road or up from the road? What the the land? Yeah, so it's pretty level with the road, but the, you know the road has a slight. Slope. No, no, the the road and then yeah, frontage so on lot two yeah. and three. Is that going up, up or going down. down? It's pretty much lot one, no, lot no, two, no, this one. Yeah, up lot yeah. three. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Which raises the slope from the road, up yeah. or down? It's uh, pretty much level with the road. It's just a slight, you know, ten percent slope in the road. Because the road goes down. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. the road yeah. dips. Oh, okay. okay. The property so kind of correct that down. Right. Follows the road. Huh? It follows the road pretty yeah, much. Yeah, kind of the same elevation of the road pretty much as the property. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the the width of the road's 35 feet here and 40 over here. Yeah, it's so it does vary. Yeah, like I said, there's always yeah. there's okay. like 600 and something feet yep. for these two lots. Remind me to tell you about that. Well, uh, I mean, I I know roads just. Yeah. I mean, but that's that, that's well, the main. That's with a private way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about that. It's um, been maintained by the people down there. It's all maintained by them. How many how many houses are down? Uh, there's there's one, for two, three billable. I mean, that are built on. Yeah down by the pond yep. then there's probably 10 houses on the pond down there yeah okay small yeah lots. That's, that's, that's up on the small <laughs> roads <laughs> no this small is side. a man shop man, man shop yeah that's yeah. right yeah. part of the purple yeah. 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 yeah okay so how are they at? going down the other way how are they right now well let's don't but we got a major we got a 40 foot wide road going off of northwest maine We'll call it major. It's, it's been there for <laughs> it's been there for a hundred years. Yeah, you know? Ledgestone Road is is a private road, but it's been there for. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it would be down in this green paved. area. Up no, up in here, up top here. Yeah. Which one's paved? Yeah. Is Ledgestone paved? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's all paved. It's paved. Okay, because I know one of them is. Yeah. I think it would. Lake Shore. Lake Shore. Lake Shore. Lake Shore. Yeah, Lake Shore is Lake Shore. Lake Shore is Lake Shore. Crushed concrete. Yeah. Oh, that's from Hilka. Far away. Okay. That's ground up. Ledge with yeah. all the filings and it's yeah, like yeah. you know the slope thing. Yeah, it's like concrete. Yeah, yeah. Out it's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I spent a fortune. That's what I did. Yeah. 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 Some of the people around here, there, too much sand in the material, and there's too much lateral movement. Yeah. So my excavator guy. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It was incredible how much we put there. Good. Excellent. Yep. Looks good. All right. All right. No Any more questions? All good. Sure, I'll make a motion to endorse the A&R plan for David Cahill for Ludstone Road. Second. Second. Yeah. Jake. Second by Mike G. Second by Mike G. Thanks for the discussion. Oh, second by Jake. Second by Jake. Okay. Yeah. Second by Jake. I heard you. I didn't realize we had the We signed a vote. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Abstain? Stamp it. Motion carries. This stamp. The record shows that absent. Yeah, we'll take the NR now. Should I put it in one spot and then one spot? No, we'll just. These guys are pros. It's supposed to be one miler and one. Two page yeah. ANR. Oh, oh, that's, that's right. Two sheets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's too big to be trying one page. You got Sharpies in there. Yeah, 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 I mean. Can we stamp while you write? Uh, on the paper to come in. Paper. Wait, you, can't, you can't you can't stamp no, the paper. Mylar. Mylar. So you can stamp the paper. Okay. Two mylar. It's gonna be both sides. Yeah. Okay, Mike, you wanna start? Stamp it. Do you drive out just yeah, 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 We can do these at the end of the meeting if you want. That's the proper word. I know, know it's not the paper. 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 It's Hey, ready, Mikey? I didn't get a chance to stamp. I'll bring it right back to you. <laughs> okay. And I need to recuse, recuse myself from this. Okay. So, come on. There's two of them here, right? Yeah. I'll give you this kind of Is stuff. there two of them? Uh, I don't know. Let me first have a little bit of a Hey, boss. Good. Is there another one over here? Yeah. yeah. Just one big lot. You have a separate stamp signed by the plane. Or this one. This is all ten. Thank you. Yep. Jake, you want to come over here and just sign this one? Absolutely. Grab the stamps. Thank you.
Alright. Do it there, Mikey. Take him down. Don't go to Move it down a little bit. Okay. Don't walk on the other side? Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess those are the my lines. Yes. Yeah, that material comes out of Dudley, doesn't it? What's that? I think it comes out of Dudley. Yeah, they're about from the Dudley top inside of Dudley. Yeah. What they do is they, they crush the ledger. Yeah. We have it out of the shop. Yeah. yeah. So what they do is they don't. They, there's no sand in it. No. It's all grinds yeah. now. No, it's that's sharp. They paid a little more money for it, but yeah. when is the clouds come down, it doesn't move at all. Is it is a ledge or shale? It's the shale. shale, shale, shale is a, a ledge. It's all ledge, but all the filings go in it. Okay. It's uh. You mean is it crane shop? That's what we have in our yard. Yeah, it's best uh, for the cranes. Oh yeah, you didn't have that stuff. Oh, yeah. I think we're four feet deep. Oh, that, oh, that way there you never kill. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, they didn't screw that. Never kill. Well, we have to. Tough thick. Because we chew up the asphalt. Some, 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 some places it's four foot. No, no we will be hard on all the loose material. Some places it's four inches with a material on it. Where's the side of Ernie? Well, it was already a good base below them. Yeah. We'll just put it on okay. top. Is it, it, it all up. Is that you, Les Stevens, yeah. or is that Zwicker? Who's the scribble? That's, that's Mike's, you. Mike's above me. That's it. That's Jake. And that's me. That's you. So who's and missing? Ernie. Ernie. Tracy. One, and Eric. Two, oh. three, four. Oh, Ernie can sign. Ernie can sign. Ernie can sign. One, two, three. What are you guys trying oh, to figure er, out? No, no. Signatures on the Aaron. Aaron, you want to sign this? Oh, yeah. We're not on that gender <laughs> item. We're still on this, this <laughs> original. Come on. Thank you. Three. <laughs> Mike, Mike's, Mike's adding up the numbers and he's, <laughs> yeah, I know, he's only got five. Sure. <laughs> but it yeah, wasn't that's computing. Tough. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have them come in four or five loads a year just to top off. Yep. So can't beat the stuff. Yeah. The refrain's come a long way too. I mean. Yeah, but that stuff still moves. Yeah, it depends on. We get it. Thank you. Oh, you stand by the other side? Yeah, you get it during the summer, it's nice. Oh, yeah. But you can't wait till. We have some lands and stuff. Cool. Thank, Thank you, go. David. Good to see you. Thank you, Thank right. you so much. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Don't we keep those. Yeah. We keep those. Yeah. I, got, I got to sign those in. Yeah, so these are the, I'll okay. sign them in okay. these are the paper ones. Yep, we're okay. good. The Mylars ID. You, you take the Mylars, we keep those. Take the Mylars. Bring them up to the registry. Yeah, this weekend. Uh, yeah, I'll throw them in the bucket. You might still need them. I know. And also, how do you keep, you keep more, it out? How do you get more juice for these things? You, have you ask Maria. Oh, okay. You quit, you, you, quit you quit over stamping. <laughs> He's a sharpie or something. All right, okay. we're good. Aaron's working there. Handing out farm tickets. I'm Aaron. I'm a farm tickets. <laughs> Call the next one. Put an A and R. Yeah, it takes a little while. Stamp it, Jake. Yeah, like loose ink everywhere. So I'm here. Stamped like smudged everywhere. Oh, I'm confused, but I'm here. Yeah, this is here. Ready? They just wait for Bill to come back. You want to throw that up? Good discussion here with Adam. It was a good discussion today with Adam. Mm -hmm. Here, I mean, because the two issues we need to address, which you know, which is not allowing people to break down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and, and the what else? So you don't see Jay in it. Are you still with that outfit? Yeah, he is. Here? He's the first guy. Just depending on what the issue is. Yeah. All right. Next time on the agenda. I like this guy better. A and R plan. Aaron Sofret, 49 Lindbergh Avenue. Right on the table up there, Byron. Don't be shy. Okay. We let the last guy do it. Yeah. We have one big one. Spread these out here a little bit. Yeah. You might not know, Byron. We only get one sheet of paper now. What's that? Yeah, we were trying to see some trees. Oh, me. oh, okay. oh okay. You can <laughs> have the extras. Okay. Okay. Usually I make the, the cool. smaller size. I didn't have a chance to do that tonight. Yeah, we got two from that guy too. We got it in. Uh, okay. Okay, so good evening. My name is Byron Andrews. I'm with the Andrews Survey and Engineering. I'm representing Aaron Silkbat tonight. Um, Aaron owns uh, the property here uh, on this copy. I've outlined it in orange. Yeah. 
what he's looking to do is cut it into three uh, buildable parcels. One parcel would be for the existing house. That would be this one here. Um, and these two would be buildable parcels right here and here. Um, the lots have adequate frontage and area for the zone. Um, there are some challenges with the, uh, with the site, um, which is uh, two things um, in particular. Uh, there are wetlands, shown here in green. Um, also there is, uh, this area shows in a flood uh, district. Uh, the flood district on the, on the map covers the whole property. However, we've done a survey, we've done uh, topographic measurements. We have an elevation for the flood zone, um, which we determined and was certified by FEMA for another parcel that we did on the lake. We show that line here in blue. Um, so both lots have buildable areas. One is right here, down near the end. The other one for lot two is right here. We looked at it very closely to make sure that we had enough area to put a house on and uh, the grading and the septic system. Obviously we, we, were, we had some challenges going into it, so we were very careful about uh, making sure that it, they are feasible lots. Um, <coughs> this lot here, um, has 11% uh, slopes in the beginning of the lot. Mm -hmm. um, we feel that with grading, and when we put the house in, we can reduce that down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, this lot here, although it has side slopes, the, the slopes perpendicular to the street line are actually uh, only like about 1%. Mm -hmm. There's three lots in there? Uh, there would be three lots. And they all have frontage on, two of them it looks like on southwest, mate. Where's the third one? Uh, they all have frontage on They're the southwest there, one, Main there's Street. There's three, okay, one, yeah. two. Okay. Yeah, it's like yeah. 1,600 feet there. That frontage. Yeah, it's, yeah. It is, it's a little quite a distance. So this lot with Aaron's existing house would have 200 feet of frontage. Both of these would have, this one has 328 mm -hmm. feet. This one has 643 feet almost mm -hmm. of frontage. And it's out of the flood zone now. Yeah, right? It's out of yeah. the flood zone. Yeah, it's officially been removed. That yeah, took us so about 45, 50 days. Oh, what, so if you look at this color map, the blue area that yeah. looks kind of like water, that's what the flood plain <coughs> used to be. The blue line is where they demonstrated to FEMA that it got moved to. Mm. Is that a color map? It's in your bag. Uh, 45 days. Than I expected. <laughs> well, that's after they, you know, obviously received it and all that. So, so. I think it would have been like, it would have been here in a year or two. They send you a letter and they say it has to be 30 to 60 days. They have to do it within 60, I think. Well, that's, that's, cool. right yeah. that's pretty good average, then. Yeah, the rate's <laughs> better. <laughs> right. it just, it's all like, all this stuff. <laughs> so the, the blue line moved off of where the red line So the, this blue hatched area? is where it used, used to, to be. be. Oh, the yeah. okay. So this is where it is, currently is, yeah. is based yeah. on yeah. what yeah. Byron submitted. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's the building footprint for the, for the, the house sizes? Is it available? Uh, gosh, I forget what the building footprint was. I know we, uh, we worked about they're smaller houses. They're okay. not, they're not, you know, big mansions okay. by any okay. sense. Okay. But they are feasible, marketable lots. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Bill, Bill any questions? Um, I, I'm noticing you didn't get my comments on the last one or this one. No. <laughs> uh, we haven't gone over them yet. No, I don't think they're I in the packet. Yeah, 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 so that's oh. what I'm like. Yeah, say. which is surprising. Anyways, okay. the comments that I had are not much different than the last one. The only difference, I think, is the floodplain. There's there's the street steep slopes again, right. okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, that's an access question that the board has to address. <coughs> um, and one of the lots, Byron, can you point out which one has inadequate sight distance? The, uh, that would be this one right here. Uh, the sight distance in this direction coming from oh, Connecticut kind of um, is limited by the, the, the slope of the road. There's a hump in the road right there, and yet you have trouble seeing over. So the site distance is only 175 feet. Uh, the required site distance in that zone for a 30 mile an hour zone is 200 feet. So it's about 25 feet short of what's required by Ashton. But we'll improve, we can improve <coughs> on that. I mean, we can take care of that during the time. You know, that and or does it get posted? Blind driveway? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to put up a 
course. Yeah. It, might be a, it might be a sign there already. Well, there's no driveway there, so we'll be posted. Down a little Put the other there. guys. Yeah. yeah. No, because there's, the, there's the guy with the um, big barn, horse yeah. farm in the back. Yeah. Yeah, he's going well, Oh, he's down the hill. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, <coughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's all shop corners. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, what would be the more feasible way? Uh, a postage? I mean, uh, a yeah. sign postage? For That's it. Yeah, a line driveway, yeah. you think, would be the best way to go? There? By the highway? The depends on how much line. site work you wouldn't have to do to make it work. You gotta take the hell out of the road. Yeah. You ain't gonna do that. No. No, we're not gonna do no, that. I, 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 <coughs> no. I don't think that. Yeah. No, I thought you said he can take care of it with site work. How? With well, it depends distance. on if the driveway. I don't know. We had a conversation on this, and Byron would yeah. know best on this. But we can certainly put up a sign. That's not yeah. a problem. I think, I think a sign works. At least get a sign up, and then if you can improve it better. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Don't want to get T-boned right. coming out of your own driveway. Right. Makes for a bad commute in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's better. Right. Yeah. Bill, any other? No. That's it. Otherwise, uh, Byron addressed my comments. So. Right turn only. Boyd, <laughs> <laughs> any further questions? Don't yeah, the slopes he's talking about. Yeah. Only come into play, really, if you're going <coughs> to have the driveway there, right? No. You get, I you mean, get, the fact that work the land. And stuff like that. It's just how it, yeah, what it exists it, today. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. The, the, it, it, the issue, the real the, issue. The way the ANR case law has come down is are these law, the board can consider accessibility to the buildable portion of the lots. Okay? So if they have guardrail across the frontage, or if they have a steep cliff, or if they have um, ledge outcroppings, these things the board can use to say, hey, that's an impediment to the accessibility to the buildable portion of this lot, so we're refusing endorsement. Okay, that's been upheld in court. Right. That's the only reason this comes up is accessibility. Right. Yeah. So the board can weigh it however they want to. Right. So it could be a mountain or vertical lift. Or yeah. railings all along the thing, highway railings. I'm curious right. about the... You don't have that. So. Site... What did you call it? The site distance? Site, distance. site, distance. site distance. Uh, is, in, is there a guideline? Yeah. Yeah. He, he used Ashtoe. Based speed, right? He used Ashtoe, yes. 200 versus 175. That got like about 10 feet. I don't know <laughs> how the hell they built the house I have. And it was built in 2000. <laughs> I'm on the side of a hill, right over a hill. I'm on the side of a hill. Yeah. That's a before I worked feet, here, man. <laughs> what can I tell you? Hey, <laughs> Do you think having a sign and any improvements that can be what? done yeah. would be relevant? Absolutely. Go through the highway department. Yeah. I mean, it'll get finessed. The yeah, with that, that, I mean, I'm happy. I'm yeah. Right. Somebody ever make a motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion to endorse the AR plan for Aaron Suckrat at 49 Lindbergh Ave with right. the. Would it be an amendment? No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't, you can't, can't condition. condition. Okay. You can't All right. Condition. Yeah. That's it. All good. Second. Motion made by Mike Z, seconded by Wes. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Fifth. I thought you could show Tracy was out. That's perfect. Oh, yes. Uh, step right. away. You standing on my lodge? Yeah, yeah. Sure. You want to this one? Step, Jake. No. <laughs> it is. And did you want that one? Uh, I'm not going to say We only need one of these, so he can take the rest of them. Okay. Do we have is that the one we want? Yeah, we're sure. stamping this yeah, one. Yeah, we already started so yeah. stamping away. That's yeah. the Mylar? Yeah. I get out of here before midnight. It's a little uh, violation there. It's alright, this is my line. No. I'm on my line. <laughs> See that right there. Lucky I make them do a half an inch spacing. <laughs> I know how many times I have to make them go back and change that. This is the one you can ride on, huh? Yeah, this is the one we're stamping. Only one? Only yep, one only stamping. One. One. One New standard, yeah. Mike. Oh, you want the my You like that? I like it, but we just did two for the other well, guy. Well, that was two sheets, though, they had. Yeah, yeah two sheets. Oh. Two so and four more. Yeah. Oh, oh that came out pretty good. All right. Yeah. Yes, they no? Who's this? Uh, we're past the hour. No, that's not good. That's a filter. That's not good. Hey, we're going to fill. I don't know what the hell they are. I don't know. You want to do that? Oh, that's Byron. Byron might have that. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Byron, are you doing Hayward, too? Hayward, too, yeah. All right. Ah, wait a second. Do I pay half? <laughs> <laughs> no flies on Aaron. Oh, I've been there before. I've been for, before zoning. <laughs> There's another one here. That one's going dry. <coughs> All 
Can I get a file weapon if you need? This is okay. No, there's two of them here. One of them about out of work. Yeah, this is a version of it. Okay. The old like one has. Yeah. It was only two. You were only doing two ones. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're splitting into three. Three would fit the hundred feet of foot and somewhere in there. So just three. Everybody sign this one. Looks familiar. Everybody sign this one. Yes, sir. So you weren't here before 2000? Correct. Well, I was here, what, August, September is when I started. Oh, okay. I know. That's kind of when we need. You only need there. one now, huh? That's great. Yeah. yeah. Over here, Bill. So, so it was not here before then. It's not my fault. I know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, I know. so I got ten, about 10 feet one way. And then the other way, there's the world's biggest boulder. It's about <laughs> 20, 30. So you take your life in your I hands every see. time. You yeah. wait, what wait. street is it? Uh, South, Southeast Main. South Did East everybody Maine. get that? <laughs> but you might need to talk to the town. That might be the town boulder. <laughs> that is the mother of, a, of boulders. <laughs> yeah, it is a town boulder. It might be a town it boulder. A town I think. Boulder. I have to talk to the town about moving that boulder. Yes. <laughs> Ernie's on it. Yeah. I don't think there's a piece of equipment in this town capable of moving that rock. <laughs> Hey, it is huge. I had that one moved. I couldn't. Like I couldn't my see house. I couldn't see. Yeah, yeah. We we drilled it. <laughs> we drilled it. It's we got a we, drilled it up. we drilled it and broke a piece off. Is what we did. And gave up. It used to stick out in the road. <laughs> oh really? <Yeah. laughs> it's the mother of a rock, right? If you had to get that out of there. Uh, I, I, no, we got nothing at the highway department to move yes. that. You <laughs> <laughs> had to drill it and blast it. The, 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 the mother uh, of all boulders. Really? There's a few of them. Aaron's back with us. I'm talking. Okay, Aaron, let, yeah, let the record show Aaron's back. Yeah. The record show that Aaron recused himself for all this. Should we get that in the minutes? Okay. Yes, that should be in the minutes. <laughs> Any, anything else, Barry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next one, too? Yeah, uh, next one, too, yeah. We got okay. Wow. All right, A&R yeah. plan for Haywood Homes, LLC 27 Webster Street. Okay. okay. Good evening, my name is Byron Andrews with Andrews Survey and Engineering. I'm representing Haywood Homes. Um, these plans may look familiar. Uh, we were before the board earlier this year. Is this as we're on this? Yep. Okay. Is this? Oh, you good. You got the other side this one. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, we'll just put that second one. This, yep. this is revised from the one we got in our packet? It is. It is. Oh, okay. right. You got a yellow one in your hand, too. That's what we proposed. That was done before. Mm -hmm. two yellow lines, it? So was there two yellow lines before? Did, uh, you created two lots. Yeah, uh, okay, the previous plan that you'd be familiar, familiar with is this whole piece here, yeah. so one which was three yellow lots. Hold on. Yeah. Orange. Okay. 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 Thanks, Bill. Yeah. 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 Which way is Douglas? Okay. So. Uh, so. This, way. this way. So you're yeah. coming <coughs> toward Webster. You go, you're going towards Webster. Yep. Yeah. Only you're going. Yeah, you turn, you turn by the light you know, towards Webster's right yeah. there along well, that stretch right there. Okay, we all set? Yeah. Bill? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Byron. Okay. So the, you, 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 the plan that you'll be familiar with uh, was this entire property here. We did it for Patricia, Patricia Manning earlier this year. Uh, Hayward Homes bought the two middle lots, which are divided by this line. So this is one lot. This is another lot at present. Um, and the... Uh, uh, what we'd like to do is divide it, change it between two lots to make it three lots. Um, the zoning there only requires a hundred feet of frontage and twenty thousand square feet. It's think it's a village residential district. Mm. Um, so you you know you have the capability to do that. All of these lots would have adequate frontage. Two would have one hundred, and one would have almost two hundred, and they would all have uh, thirty-one thousand square feet. Uh, total here is I'm trying to read all my all my math here um, about one acre, and this one has a little has one acre. So these these both have about twice as much area as required. This one has uh, the required eight, about fifty percent more than the required area. They all have <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me adequate frontage for the zone. Um, the only issue uh, is site distance. The site distance in this direction for these two lots is somewhat restricted. The 
sight distance required in that zone uh, is 360 feet. Uh, this lot has 200 feet, this has 275. This lot has adequate sight distance in Faster both directions, board. and both these lot, lots have uh, more than enough sight distance uh, heading towards Douglas. Any state rails? Uh, there are rails. The rails are between here and here. The access would be just to the west of the rails for this one, and it's significant west of the rails on the east here. Okay. Um, there are also some steep slopes there, but it's only about five feet of slope, so we feel like it could be easily handled uh, mm -hmm. you know, during uh, construction. Would you say it was zoned? Uh, village rails, uh, residential. Village residential. The Excuse me. Uh, yeah. <coughs> So, uh, Byron, you, you said the um, sight line distance is, what is it? It's uh, 200 feet for this one, 275 for this one. And that's because of the, the slope of the road and the speed? Uh, the road? Yeah, it's because of the, the speed. It's it's uh, under what's required for, the, for that zone. The 40, 45. Is it 45? 40? 40? I think it's 45. I yeah. Yeah, okay, I didn't think it was that, yeah, that fast, that quick there. there. Yeah, it does ramp up down. from 40 down to 45. That's a okay. Oh no, I just thought it was slowing yeah, down the whole the flashing light. Going up, yeah. and then you go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down, like the speed limit. Oh, the speed limit. <coughs> um, the whole road's 45. Is it as soon as you yeah, turn on it? Yeah, pretty 45. much. Oh, wow. okay. Huh. I don't think it was coming from Webster's on that shop corner where all the houses are. Is it? Well, I mean, I'm sure, right? I'm sure they checked it, yeah. and yeah. that's how they came out. Yeah, no, I didn't know it was 45. But yeah, it's pretty much 45 the whole length. I think um, the first thing, uh, I think the application was deficient by $50. I have a check here. <laughs> I feel I, I know, uh, I'm more sure about the, about what was required for the check. Um, uh, I haven't filled it out yet because I didn't know if you want the $50 that's deficient or if you want a new check for the total. No, just to <coughs> supplement it with the $50 would be fine. Okay. Um, and then outside of that, um, he addressed all the comments I had, uh, regulatory comments I had. The only issue is, and it's for the board, is yep. the sight distance on those two lots and the <coughs> slopes on two lots. Correct? Yeah. I think it should be the same thing with signage. Which two? Well, originally two lots, but now it's three lots, right? So Correct. The t two that he's worried about are... Um, the two lots with the site distance. The two original. Uh, well actually, it would have been just one of the original lots. One of the original. One of the original. This lot, as originally configured, had 275 foot site distance <coughs> heading towards uh, Webster. The entrance for this one would be in the same location, so it's still <coughs> 275. This, one's, this one would be a little more restricted than that. You said 200. Yeah, 200? 200. 200. Yeah. Sure. So we just, you know, caution blind drive. Again, you know, I want to caution the board. We can't. Yeah. I know. We put can't put conditions or the restrictions the on no. it. What, what, what would you recommend, I guess, to mediate anything like that? Fire probably yeah, Then what do you do? How do you, you make a judgment call? I mean, you. He could walk. He could make every promise in the book and walk out of no, here and no, do just, none of it. And that's often what happens because he's the engineer and the guy building. It's a different guy, and he's not going to know. And you know, yeah. Yeah, we can't condition. No. no. If well, I should ask much. But if there were two lots versus three, would the second lot have adequate? Like both <coughs> lots be adequate? And before, uh, or does the three lot. exacerbate the situation? Uh, the, the third lot is it, the third lot is a little a worse question. than the second lot. The second lot, of course, was already approved by the board earlier this year with 275. So this one would have 200. Um, other than that, um, the sight distance in this direction is. And the requirement is what again? Three. Three sixty. Three sixty. Three sixty. Yeah, so that's a big one. I thought it was three hundred. Just look at my notes. Get three sixty. It's like fifty percent. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. It's a big difference. Yeah, they had two buildable lots, and they're trying to squeeze the third one now, right? Yeah. yeah if you did have the third, then. They well, dimensionally they could. In all fairness, dimensionally they they can. Mm -hmm. Correct. The, the dimension, but the yeah, the, your issue yeah. is line of sight. Line line of sight. Line. What was what was the line of sight for the original two parcels for our education or our refresher? I think it was 275. Yeah, 275. 275. 275. 275 for both. Uh, this one here has, one of them was fine. this meets the requirements. It has about 500 feet. Okay. 400 in this direction. 
Uh, this one, which was already approved, would be Correct. using the same entrance. Has 500 in this direction, 275 in that direction. Correct. But 275 out of 360 versus 200 out of 360. And now, now with the creating of the third right. lot, you've got one of them with just 200. Right. And you're supposed to be at 360. What you know I mean? Yeah. Of course, that's at the, at the jurisdiction. Yeah. I mean, that's at the um, the opinion of the board. Yeah. Um, again, it does have adequate access. It's just a matter of how you want to judge the site distance. I think, I think it's a fast road. <laughs> 45 miles an hour. I think it's a tough call because we approved 275, but now it's 200 with a third, and that is kind of. Yeah, it's dropping it. Yeah. yeah, you're cutting into. I just want to look at the percentage of that. What that is. Um, no, we're talking 200 versus the. It's 80%. <coughs> no? 45%. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're yeah, only meeting 50. You're, yeah, yeah, you're only meeting 55%. Oh, 55 yeah. percent of what the recommended. So, I mean, when you're at 55 percent, yeah. And so, when you're at 275 and we give that at 360, you know, you're at 75 percent. Um, it, I mean, it, it, it's a 20 percent drop. You know what I mean? And it's 55 percent. You know, you were you were meeting it at 70, you know, 76. I think we were comfortable with that when it was at 275. And that's seventy six percent on the site. The, the one we just did? This one. Oh, this one. Yeah. Um Yeah. I, I know we can't condition no. stuff, but you know how I no. feel and nothing's being offered, so um I'm kind of it's too much of a drop. Yeah. I personally I I would hate to pull out of that driveway yeah. if it was me. Yeah. I drive that road every day, and I and I know where that lot is. And I look at that, yeah, and yeah. I can't picture a driveway going in there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the only way to you have to make a motion, and if it doesn't get approved, then yeah. we'll have to what was, what we'll have was the Well, well, before we make any action, um, I'll offer to Byron. Mm -hmm. um, is there any way you could get out there and do anything to improve that at this point, uh, whether it's cut a tree down or, you know, maybe do some grading on the access to knock a hill down or, you know, I don't know. Uh, because that, it, it sounds like the board's primarily hung up on the site distance issue. I think we probably could, could I'd have to examine it myself. Uh, I wasn't out here today. Mm -hmm. I had a survey crew out there. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, I'd be happy to go out there, take a look at it myself, see if there's any uh, recommendations we can have in terms of if there are any trees in the way, or if there's a, um, you know, if there's some way to grade, some way to grade the driveway. Yeah, the location of the driveway somewhere on the on the, on the yeah, front I mean, or, yeah, maybe that we could, you know, move the driveway a little bit one way or the other. Yeah, get a little more. Or, yeah. or Byron, you, even even your property lines coming towards the street, turning those slightly to maybe pick up a better thing. Yeah. But if you're, yeah. Yeah. I think you just there's just like a hump right yeah, on yeah, the yeah, street. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's right where the hump is. Yeah. 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 So so is it the hump that's limiting the sight distance? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if you dr if you're driving west, you, there's a hump there and cars just. Whoop, just like right that, away. there's a car right there on top yeah. of the hill. You, don't, you can't see the car you coming They disappear. They, it it yeah. goes up and then it goes down and back up again. Okay. Okay. And Very they, they so so it's chances down. are that he, he won't be able to physically do anything to improve that? I, I can't say for sure they couldn't. He might be able to, he might be able to do some cutting and, and, and give them a better... Or even tweak it. Because they'll be, cause they'll be coming, they'll be coming yeah. down. Not, yeah, yeah, you'll be you'll be coming down on that lot probably yeah, yeah. from above. So you might be able to get that sight line distance if you do some clearing and you can see down into that little hall. Yeah. You, I mean, you you, you get a hundred and hundred and ninety seven feet <coughs> on that on lot on the, on the other one on the lot right. D. Yeah. Take some lot of that. Parcel D. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I think you can look at cutting the property line yeah. to open that sight line up for that. Because I think there's some things that can be done here. Maybe, so you pull it over to the right ward, yeah. you yeah, establish like, those yeah. two. That's what you were just saying. Kind of like this. A yeah. Right. Yeah. See yeah. if you Correct. can get a driveway in where it okay. could meet that 275 that's already approved. Or, or okay. improve it better than 55%. You have plenty of land area too, so it's not yeah. like you're going to impact. You that. have the frontage. Yeah. 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 Plenty of the frontage. 
Yeah, we can take a look at between the between you know possibly shifting the lot lines, uh, grading, and you know brush or tree removal. We can take a look and see how we can improve that. So, if that's the case, then I'll need if you want mm -hmm. to request a withdrawal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, we'll do you want to waive a reapplication we'll fee yeah, we'll, we'll sure. for sure. only dealing with this site distance sure. issue? Yeah. Okay. That'd be fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Works. Is that good, bud? Yep. All right. Make sure okay. you give it. Get a check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, don't go anywhere. Don't go reapply. You'll bill a check plus you gotta write a note. Yeah. He's gonna withdraw without prejudice. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> we'll waive so the. Uh, both of them? Yeah. Yeah. That's a little bit. Yeah, just leave yeah. them there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's quite yeah. yeah, that's. I was, like, I was like looking for passing grades. <laughs> like 55 stuff. That's a little bit yeah, I wish like when we did from the other one, before I knew exactly where it was, like we thought of it before. That, that's a tough All spot right. for a driveway. That's too that's that's that, But that's a slow road. I don't know. That, that, should, that should be 40. Uh, on, 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 Ledgestone? No. Yeah, where are the Oh, yeah. Oh, beforehand. Oh, yeah. This one. Yeah. Power. Bosma cell tower. Uh, in your 2B sign folder, you should have a new surety form for an old cell tower that's over on Bosma's on Northeast Main Street. Um, I'm not sure if they're switching companies or what, what's going yeah, that's on. That's a but, different name, I think. Yeah. But I'm going to need the board to sign the surety agreement that's in the to be signed folder. Okay. So you should vote to accept it and sign it. Right. It's been reviewed by town council. Okay. Reviewed okay. by town council? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So <coughs> make a motion. You need a motion? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure what you need. need a vote motion for what changing? Accept the accepting the new uh, surety for bond agreement. For Bosman's cell tower for 436, yep. 440 North East Main Street. Yes. Good. Cool. Second. That was a motion. Mike. Second. Yep. Yep. The in. Second. Less second today. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. And we'll sign that at the end of the note. Yeah. Oh, we can find it. Accessory apartment yeah, special permit. One. Here, Valley Why is Realty it out of order? Management, LLC. Seven mechanic street. No, it's only one in there. Ernie's packet. Yes, yeah, you must only have it then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's in the sign. Good. Yeah. We'll, we'll pass it around uh, at the end of the meeting. Um, we only have one accessory, so you know. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> I'll bring it up. No. Do number two. I'm going to make a sign afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, we'll sign them all at the end. Um, we'll approve them all and we'll sign right. them at the end. Yeah, but we only have one. You only have one what? The in the package, she only copied one in your we packet. Only have the there's oh, there's two. It sounds like there's yeah. two in the there two is. B sign folders. Yeah. Should be so one, two, I know. three, yeah. three. Yeah. All right. Ready to go? Yeah. There's. Oh, there's only one Let's in the packet, but there's two. Right. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve Valley Real Estate Management LLC Seven Mechanic Street <coughs> for the accessory apartment permit. Second. Is the next step. Second. Motion made by Les. Seconded by Mike Z. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion okay. carries. Uh, we don't have a copy of the other ones to look at. I don't know what to tell you. Crescent Hill. Oh. This was approved. All right. Accessory apartment special permit. McGuire. Mm -hmm. Mary McGuire, 31 Royal Crest. We have that. Yep. You have that? Drive. Okay. This yeah, is sorry, the McGuire. Renewal one. bill. Yeah. 420. Four, four, this four, is renewal. Four, three. 31 Royal Crest we have. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we just did uh, Mechanics Street last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh -huh. Does anybody have any this. questions on this? It's, it's just protocol. Nope. Yeah. 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 Paid on our good taxes here. Yeah. 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 It wouldn't have yeah. came before yeah. without yeah. being approved on taxes, right? Yeah, yeah. I would not have. They paid? They made it to yeah. us. I can't yeah. answer it. So we need a more. It's not part of the form? I can't answer it. Yep. Is there any sensory problem? We know that. You can't answer. It's on the back. It's right there. It's on the back. There you go. Okay. Well, I asked They're you if you did. Back. I did. Put it on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Pamp card signed. No, the back. Card. 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 No, the back. Card. 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 Always. There we go. Okay. Okay. So we're making a motion to accept the accessory apartment special permit renewal for Mary Lou McGuire, 31 Royal 
press drive. Thank second. you, second. Oh. Yep. Two other ones. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion made by Mike Z, seconded by Aaron. Mm -hmm. yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Yeah. Motion carries. Yes. Okay. All right. Here we already have yep. four. Yep. It's done. Yeah, why is this on there again? Or just, we already did. Yep. To be signed. To, to be, be signed. signed. Yeah, okay. yeah. We already got it. That's why. Oh, minutes? Yeah. We already approved it, yeah. yeah. All right. And to the one minutes. Take it away there. Mike. 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 Meeting. Mike. Yep. Mike. Meeting minutes. Yes. For 11 12. Yeah. <laughs> uh, November 12th. Can I see you, Byron? Page three. Oh, page three. Uh, <laughs> Look down in the middle of the page, there's number 12. Yep. Old business. Two lines above the number 12, it says meeting minutes as amended mm -hmm. for October 22nd. Actually, it as, should be as written. Okay. Oh, okay. Because oh, we didn't amend anything. Right. Okay. okay. That's what I mean. So noted. Okay. Then, oh, okay, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, number 12. One, two, three, four. Fourth sentence says, before they do, they work. I think it should be the work or their work. Yeah. Before they do. She's a good catch then, Mike. Lucky. We need a new Webster would be happy. We need a new adult <laughs> entertainment district. That's what Tracy said. Before really? they do, the work. The work. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. oh, yeah. the ones in the forest? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have. That's yeah. all you got. Okay. Anybody Scrolls. else have anything? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, on the minutes? No. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. You make a motion huh? to approve as amended the meeting minutes for November 12, 2019. I'll second them. Yeah. Motion made by Mike G, seconded by Mike Z. Yep. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. All right. Sign vouchers. Yep. Come yeah. around. Okay, Bill. Uh, yeah, I did want to give you an update because it was brought up at the last meeting um, on Upton site. Yeah. Um, so there's yeah, a summary in your packet it. on the status, um, and there's a little sketch plan. It's not an as built plan, but it's a sketch plan. Um, and they do plan on submitting an as built uh, coming forward by the end of December. They said. By the end of December. Yep. Yeah, That's probably. what he says. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, you in our packet. Yeah. It's in your packet. Yeah. 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 Mike. Oh, Mike's got Thank it. Thank you. In there. Thank you, Bill. Okay. And yeah. uh, the other thing is, uh, as you may know, town meeting approved the article regarding bounds at Shady Knolls. Nice. Sweet. So we have funding. So I assume we'll go with the. We solicited three proposals. I got the okay. low proposal, which is what we based the numbers on yes. the town meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll authorize him to proceed, and we'll get them. Um, the work, the work done not all of them, but uniformly throughout the yes. subdivision. Okay. Of that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, um, I guess I'll need a vote authorizing yep. me to issue a notice to proceed to civil site survey Rich Goslin, who came in as the low bidder. Sure. So moved. Yep. Okay. Just a second. I okay, motion made by Mike Civil C, site. seconded by Aaron. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those abstain? Oh, spatial data. Carries. I'm sorry, let me substitute. Spatial data, spatial data yeah. 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 They, they kind of overlap once in a while, so this was spatial data and oh, design. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, right. so modify that motion. So moved. Second. second. So moved. Second. second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Aye. And then, Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. And then for spring, can we? Grab another subdivision, possibly, and do basically the same. We can do Refresh that. Refresh the article. I would appreciate it. Yep. To try to knock, as we know, yeah. to try to knock some of this away, just chip yep. at. Chisel yeah. away yeah. the stones. That's I think idea. it's the best way to do it. Is there another subdivision? <laughs> Anybody else oh, yeah. I think I'd say Conservation Drive. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have what? Oh, the whole yep. road. Same, same thing. Then. Or to do, yeah. if you yeah. can, like the same yeah. amount and spread yeah. it out. That's done. The same way or whatever yep. to try to get something started. It's uh, what do we have? Five, at least five subdivisions. Least. We're going to do. Yeah, we got about a half dozen. Yeah. Think. So yeah, conservation is like three half years. The down zero two, so maybe in bonds conservation and how many? How many? How many did we just get? A, did six or seven? 
No, it was more than that. Yeah, well, I think it was. It was probably fifty percent of the ones out at. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a, that's so, a good so, so, do you have the numbers of what conservation was? I'd have to look at the drawings. Okay. Because yeah. we might just be able to knock out conservation. As well. well, no, like Jake uh, uh, said, maybe knock it out and then have some to start maybe yeah. on, on the next. I'll put one. a little chart together showing the subdivisions and how many pounds yes, each right. one has. Okay. So. That's that sweet. All right. Anybody else have anything? Oh, this Sorry. is good. Sorry. They're still filling that, you said? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, Are that's they? what we talked about last yeah. time. Yeah. Still what? Yes. Because the issue was the, the grades were too steep, so yeah. they, they want to use material to just shape it instead of pushing the stuff oh. around that's out there. No, they're going to stop here once they do a final. They oh. think they're going to keep on going. They're gonna no, they're going to stop, gonna but they're entitled to keep going. Yeah. yeah, we just want to get an as belt. Right now. Yeah. And did we ever get an as belt? We wanted one from uh, was it from Pine? We have not gotten one yet. Um, last I heard, they were working on one, but that was, you know, maybe a month ago, I'm guessing. <laughs> Who else owns this in our bill? Um, there's more. Can, can we follow up on that one? Will we kind of send I can stop, send I'm going to stop passing email. stuff around the sign. Okay. I can send an email. We kind of said that yep. we wanted one, and you wanted one before the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. Like, to, to try to wrap yeah. stuff up. Tell me you looked underneath the Christmas tree and you're missing something. The Asbel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was sending that around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you supposed to be sent around the packets to sign? Andrew's getting time to go. Sure. We all set? We all set. Bernie? Right. Bernie, are you all set? Make your motion. Yes. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Yep. Motion made by Mike <laughs> C. Seconded by Mike G. All those in favor? All right. All right. All right. All those abstain? Motion carries. Yeah.